Hey guys, Ray from LoveyRV.com and today I'm going to install some more of this uh, window shading material. It's called an Easy Snap. Same company that uh, made my uh, skirting. So a number of years back I actually uh, reviewed the product. Uh, I'll link back to that video if you want to watch that. But at that time I did my back window and the side window. And mainly because where we summer here on the estuary we get a lot of late day sun. So this is basically looking west over here. So the sun comes down later in the day and then it beams right into my back window. You can see it's already starting to go in there. So because we have such a large window it would just really overheat the inside of the rig and make the air conditioner work like crazy. So this material sits on the outside and blocks all the heat out. And it's worked really well. Prior to this, I used to put that foil, um, kind of bubble foil in the window to block heat, but it still would let heat through the window. And we'd still get some heat, and also we'd lose our view completely. This you can actually see out from the inside. So I did the back window and this side window for here on the estuary. But I also did another window. I left these windows because they're always in the shade. That's Anne's window. She likes to look out that. But I, I did a sheet for this window as well because when we boondock in the southwest we like to park nose into the sun so early morning the sun would get into here and it would it'd get quite hot behind where, where Anne sits at her computer so so that she didn't have to keep putting foil in the window. I'll just uh, put it on that window. Anyway, to get to what I'm doing today, I decided for this summer I'd invest in some more of the Easy Snap shading material. So I got myself a six foot by seven foot roll of it, and it comes the kit comes with 36 of the, the Easy Snap connectors. You stick these on the side of the rig with the 3M tape on them, and then this goes onto that and this fits through the mesh material. So I've already put some on. I'm going to do this window, which is our bedroom window. <clears throat> and it isn't even shaded by the, the awning or anything. So it, during the early morning and most of the day, a lot of light can get through there and uh, get quite hot in the bedroom. And then I'm also going to do the window. It's our kitchen window back here. And then I also have a little window where I sit that gets quite hot behind me. So I think I got enough to do those three windows this time. So like I say, I've already stuck most of them on to the side of the wall. You say you want to go uh, so 8 or 10 inches between. I found they hold pretty good, so I'm just going to go with six of them and see how that works out. When I did the main back window, I kind of went overkill and followed their directions for uh, for wind and I started putting them six inches apart. So I ended up with way more than I needed. So experience has told me that I don't really need as many snaps. So first step to prep the surface before you apply the, the snap on there. So they want you to clean it off use a 70% uh, isopropic rub rubbing alcohol and just spray it in the area. Kind of let it sit there because you, you don't want 100% uh, or something really high content that's going to evaporate so that you can uh, it can be there for a while while you clean off oxidation and uh, dirt from the area just to make it stick really well. And then they also do sell a, a primer pen for certain surfaces that are maybe not as flat, but I find these stick pretty good on, on my rig, so I'm not going to bother with the primer pen. I'm just going to stick it straight on. There they have like the 3M backing, and these things really stick well. Like I say, I have some that have been on there for years, and I've only lost a few over the years, and that was mainly because I let the thing hang, kind of put some sideways force on it. So we'll just stick her right there in the middle. Then they say to put 15 pounds of force on that just to give it a good bond. 
They also say to leave these for 24 hours before you start hanging the mesh on. That's why I did a bunch beforehand so I could show you. There we go. Give you a closer look how these snaps work. So that's what I just stuck on the rig. Then this pin will go on the snap like so. And see that pin there. So that's going to push through the mesh material. Once it's gone through the mesh material, there's a cap here. Grab one of those. And on the outside, you push that on. And there's a little catch on it like that. So it stays in place. Then when you want to pull your material off, they give you a handy dandy little tool here. Kind of fits under there. And that will... Uh, unsnap it for you and that stays with the material and this stays on your RV. Now they don't really show up too much. This is white. They have different colors you can get. I got the white to match mine. You don't really notice them too much. And when you want to put your material back on you just snap it in place. And if you want to get the little end off there's a little catch in here and you can uh, pull that end. Kind of hard to do like that but anyway you lift that one way and you can get the little button off. So next step is for me to uh, lay out the material and cut the right sizes for each window. When you mount the studs they want you to mount it on a flat surface. <clears throat> you can mount it on the window if you'd like but better to mount it on the outside so you get full coverage. They don't really want you to mount it on the frame because a lot of the frames like mine for instance has a roundness to it so it wouldn't stick as well. A lot of them are rubberized too, so they stick better right on the, the surface of the sidewall. So I have two windows exactly the same, front and back. So I've gone and measured out the two windows. Measure twice, cut once, right? And they give you a, a white pencil so it's easy to see where you're going to be cutting. Um, you can use their little tool that came with it. It has a blade on it. Or you could use, I guess, a, an X-Acto knife. I'm going to use a sharp pair of scissors to cut them out. Hopefully the rain doesn't show up. Started this, it was beautiful. Now we got clouds coming. Welcome to spring. Okay, well I'm glad I went with seven feet because I actually had enough to do this one window over here. Um, sometimes late sun goes through that window. Also it gives a little privacy to the next door neighbors. Let's go around. I was able to do all of this side windows. Looking pretty good. Decided to do the door windows. Got the side window and the two smaller windows all covered. I do a little bit of trim, not pretty close, but I can trim off some of the bottom there. Wanted to make sure it was big enough. You want to cut it a little bigger versus smaller, that's for sure. I think that looks pretty good. Just give you a closer look at the material here. It's one of the big benefits of this material, other than long lasting, is when you cut it, the edges don't fray at all. Like I say, I have stuff that's been around for years and it hasn't frayed at all on the edge. You just cut it straight, you don't need any seams or anything. It also washes very easily, it's kind of like a, a vinyl, so you can clean it up with a soap and brush. There's how the thing pops through. They say when it pops through, you want to make sure it goes right to the bottom of the pin there. So you can see there's a number of catches there you want to... Make sure the button will go right to the bottom. 
Then it can bottom out on the, the pin there. Get a good snap. So when you take it off, that's what it looks like. Comes off like that. I find the stuff rolls up really nice. I just roll it all up in a tight roll. It's very lightweight, easy to store. So overall, I'm really happy with the, the easy snap shades. And their skirting is really good too. So maybe let's go inside and see what it looks like inside. See if we can see out. So here's the view out the bedroom window. You kind of see that you do get a little, I guess they call it a moyer effect. That's squiggly lines right there sometimes. But lets in quite a bit of light and you can see out but people can't see in. Except at night the reverse is true. You can't see out but people can see in so you have to Make sure you pull your uh, day-night shades at night. Let's go check out the other ones here. Same deal. Another drawback to these is if you're quite a distance away you can see out fine, but I sit quite close to this one and when you get really close you get quite a screen door effect. <clears throat> So it's not very nice to look out. So I like to sit here and um, go on my computer and have tea in the morning and look at the estuary. So what I'll do is I'll take a few clips off the top and I'll just fold it down and let it hang down during the morning time. Then when the sun comes around and I need the, the heat uh, blocking, I just go and clip it back up in place. Well, there you go. I think that's going to work out really well for us in the summer. Just help keep it a little cooler in there, especially when it's too windy out to uh, deploy my awning. We're on a, an ocean spit here, so sometimes it's hot out, but you get quite a breeze and I have to bring the awning in. And then, you know, the sun's pouring into the windows, so that'll help, uh, help us use the AC a lot less this year. Because that's kind of annoying. They're very loud. I'd rather just have a fan or open some windows. That's another advantage to these is I can just open the windows and they're just like a screen. Anyway, if you have any questions about them, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them for you. And I'll put a link to the Easy Snap website. Till next time, Ray from Love RV. Cheers, everyone.